coming at you today with some information on how to transition correctly and how to jump into maintenance. Everyone's maintenance plan looks a little bit different, which is what is amazing because all of our bodies are different. Um, all of our goals are different. Our activity level is different. And so Optavia makes it really simple, surprising, right? Not surprising because five and one, four and two, all the plans that they have set up for us are really, really simple. And so maintenance is not anything that has to be complicated either. And so I'm going to share my screen um, and walk you through transition to maintenance. Okay. So um, first of all, how do I know when it's time to transition? And so a lot of us walk in with a number goal in our mind. Some people tell me, they're like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be at because I haven't been there in so long. Who even knows? And so there are some medical, like medically recommended indicators. And so the BMI is one of those that number throws me off every time. I'm like, how is it the same for boys and for girls? And how is it, you know, so, but under 25 is a healthy range for everybody. And so you can Google the BMI chart. Um, it's based on your height and your weight. And then you kind of, you know, like multiplication chart, you like find your number and you want to be in the green. That's the goal, right? To be in the green. Um, but what we have found and what Dr. Anderson really recommends is a better indicator. The Mayo Clinic um, has done thousands of studies about health and um, I mean like literally like 600,000 trials or like, what is it called? I don't even know. Long-term studies or whatever. Um, where really waist circumference is the best indicator of your health. And so you're measuring, you can look in your life book. Y'all, if you haven't been in your life book, it is amazing. Jump in there. But you can look in your life book um, and it will tell you where to measure exactly. And so for men, it's under 37 inches. For women, it's under 31 inches. And the reason they say that is because everyone's body is shaped differently. And so you may carry weight in different ways that I would carry weight or someone else or even your siblings carry weight. Um, but when it comes to your waist, that's looking at the fat that's surrounding your organs. And so you want it to be at 31 inches because that means you have limited fat surrounding those organs, which is putting you at a lower risk for so many different diseases in the future, for heart disease, for um, organ failure, for all of the things you're staying healthy because those organs really are where it keep us functioning day in and day out. And so you're putting the right things in your body, but you also wanna make sure that the fat there is as limited as you can get it, but really at 31 inches for women is a great place to be. And so, um, so that's one where you can look at, and then if you have the tools to get your body fat percentage, for men it's 18%, for women it's 25%. And so those are some things to kind of help you where if you might have a pound goal and you're not sure, like, am I done? Is this where I wanna stop? Um, look at these medical recommended, um, you know, kind of parameters as far as being at a healthy place for you, and hopefully that will help. So um, there is a section in the life book. If you go, I know it's at the very beginning where you measure your waist um, in the your story part and tracking your story, but then also when you go into the maintenance section, it's element 14 and 15 um, in the life book. It will also give you some additional information and then it's also in the habits of health book because you know they put it in all different areas for us to read so um so yeah hope that helps but that's kind of a great way if you don't have a pound number or you may have a pound number but you're you get there and you're like well that was easier than i thought what do i do now <laughs> and so um use these to kind of help you out um and then there's three parts to transition and maintenance. So the first one is determining your TEE. This is your total energy expenditure. So most of us have heard calories in need to equal calories out. If you are eating more than you're burning, you're gonna start gaining slowly. If you're eating less than you're burning, you're in starvation, which is not a good place either. And so really those need to equal out. And so the science side is for you to figure that out 
the Optavia side is here is the meal plan that matches that. And so um, hopefully this will make it really easy for you. But then part two, so find that first and send it to your coach. We'll, I'll have a link for you, but you can also go to the Optavia website. Um, and then part two is transitioning. You're reintroducing some of those foods that we haven't had necessarily on five and one specifically. Four and two, you may have some of those healthy snacks already. And so your transition looks a little bit more lenient than the five and one, um, but you still wanna reintroduce some of the food groups that we've, been, we've eliminated. Because if you just jump head first from five and one to your calorie, um, expenditure, it's going to be a shock to your body. And so you reintroduce those slowly so that your body doesn't freak out basically when it comes down to it. And then part three is just live in your day to day. We are just going to live it up. You're going to enjoy. You've already have been able to enjoy a healthy lifestyle. So you're just going to continue doing that um, just within the parameters and the limits and um, the foods that are recommended for you. And so the way I would describe a maintenance plan is like a, your very own little food pyramid, okay? So Optavia is handing you like, hey, here's how many veggies you should have, and here's how many starches you should have, and here's how many pieces of fruit you should have. Um, and so it's your own little food pyramid that is specialized for you and your body and your needs. Um, so to calculate your TEE, all you need is your weight. It'll ask you for your weight, your height, your age your gender, and then your activity level. And so that activity level will range from like sedentary zero to three days, you're like barely doing any movement, um, or one to three days, you're kind of doing some activity, whether that's walking or jogging or going to a workout, or three to five days or then every single day. And so that activity level also plays into it because the more activity you're doing, the more your body's burning. Um, and so go ahead and you can fill this out and then that's what you wanna send. It'll give you a number and that's what you wanna send your health coach so that they can help you set up, set yourself up for success when it comes to knowing which plan is for you. Um, so then you will begin weekly transition. And so one group food group at a time, this is where people get really excited. They're like, what, I can have this now? Oh my gosh. So the first week is any vegetable. You're still on five and one. And so this is where it takes a couple weeks to transition, but it's worth the time, I promise. So you're still on five and one, but you're adding two servings of any vegetable, okay? so. Start having carrots, start having some Brussels sprouts. Hopefully you haven't had Brussels sprouts. That's one that people don't think about when they're making their lean and greens. I'm like, no, you can have Brussels sprouts. Um, they're green, but they are not as lean as we want them to be. Um, so some of those starchier vegetables, you're gonna start bringing those back in. Onions, butternut squash, acorn squash. Um, now I will say corn, is not a vegetable, guys. <laughs> it is considered a starch. So make sure that you are not bringing in that corn yet or yams or potatoes. Um, peas are also considered a starch. They're real starchy. And so hold off on those for a little bit, but you will get to eat those again. So, um, so bring in any vegetable. And what I usually recommend is to throw it into your lunch fueling. So you may have the chili for lunch and you can have a side you know, salad with some of those extra carrots or whatever it is that you are wanting to introduce that week. Um, or you may have, um, I'm trying to think of another one, maybe some mashed potatoes, you throw some ground turkey in there and you have some roasted Brussels sprouts with it. But just add in with your lunch because it'll make your lunch a little bit bigger. Your lean and green at dinner is already pretty big. So to add an additional cup of veggies along with your three servings of veggies is a lot. So that's why I say distribute it in a different time of the day. Um, week two, so that's one week. Week two is fruit. Who's been missing the fruit? Because that was one thing that I was so sad. I was like, I can't have fruit. Okay, I'll just drink this tropical shake. Um, but it is a four and one. Okay, so it's four fuelings and one lean and green. However, you still get that cup of vegetables and you get two servings of fruit a day. And so I recommend for my clients to split their lean and green. So you're getting half the protein at lunch, 
half the protein at dinner, but you're adding a serving of vegetables at lunch and you're adding a serving of vegetables at dinner. And then you can have that fruit throughout the day um, with your first fueling or with your afternoon fueling um, to kind of just make up for it. So one thing I still do is I will do the hot chocolate fueling with my coffee and I'll have a banana or I'll do the hot chocolate fueling with some kind of fruit on the side. And so that has become my breakfast and I'm okay with that because the mornings I'm not going to cook breakfast. So, um, so that's where you just kind of make it fit into your day wherever it's most convenient. So four and one, you split the lean and green half and half and then add those veggies, add that fruit. And then week th three, you're adding dairy, okay? So you're also having all the things you've had already and now you're adding dairy onto that. So still a four in one, which is kind of like a four in two, but because you've added so much, uh, but it's that split lean and green and then one serving of dairy. Okay, so that can be, I always recommend Greek yogurt because it's got the protein versus just regular yogurt and then low fat or fat free dairy. You don't want to go full fat there. It's really heavy. It's a lot. So um, you've been used to almond milk, keep doing that if that's something that you really enjoy. Or if you love coconut milk or your family drinks 2% milk, stick with that. You know, don't make it complicated for yourself. But if you love almond milk, keep that up. That's something that we all, everyone in my family, that's all we buy. And so, um, but that dairy is really awesome to be able to reintroduce um, if you want, if you've been missing yogurt or if you've been missing um, you know, full, like regular milk. Um, I do recommend Greek, plain Greek yogurt because a lot of the ones that are flavored have a lot of added sugar. And so you can add in, because you've already had fruit, you can add in frozen fruit. You can add in strawberries or berries or, um, you know, throw some slivered bananas on there with almonds um, into your yogurt to flavor it naturally versus how they've already kind of maybe snuck some artificial sweeteners in there or some of, you know, just the put more sugar <laughs> than what we would like in there. So week three, four in one, a serving of dairy, two servings of fruit, and two servings of veggies. So you can see how slowly you're adding calories to your day and you're adding these food groups to your day. And then the fourth through six weeks, and so, and I'll explain why it kind of um, lasts longer if you need it to, but you're adding more protein. So that's gonna be your second lean and, lean and then starches. So this is where I tell people to be careful because Americans can like inhale those starches and it can get dangerous. And so you really, really wanna be careful that you only have one, having one serving. Um, so this is a three in one, okay? It kind of sounds weird. It sounds like you're not eating enough, but you're, eat, you're eating plenty, I promise. Um, and so four to six ounces of protein, which really is, you know, basically your lean, your second lean. Um, so that can be your lunch protein. You can do tuna or chicken or turkey or whatever it is you're wanting to do. And then you add one serving of whole grains. So that can be at lunch or at dinner. Now, whole grains, that's where those sweet potatoes regular potatoes, quinoa, brown rice, whole wheat pasta, all of that can be reintroduced um, in this week. Just limit it to one each day. Um, and then you've still got your cup of veggies, you've still got your two servings of fruit and your serving of dairy. And so you've basically created a new lean and green at lunch because you've got the protein plus your cup of veggies um, with, you can have a side of fruit with that. And then you've basically created a breakfast because you have the fruit, second serving of fruit, and you can have some Greek yogurt with that, or you can have, you know, your fueling at breakfast and Greek yogurt with fruit at lunch. Um, but you basically now are living in a three and three, but it's a little more limited. Now, the reason they say that this can last two weeks is if your TEE is pretty high, you want to look at that. So some people may get, I am allowed, allowed, you know, my limit is two starches because I want to stay at the weight that I'm at. I don't want to overdo it. Um, so I get two starches a day. So me adding another starch from this fourth week is not a big deal. But if you work out every single day, 
you may be allowed four starches or you may be allowed, really, I haven't seen more than four, but you don't want to go from one week, one to four right away. You want to be able to kind of gradually add more starches and more dairy and more of the fruit and that kind of thing um, over those couple weeks. So don't just like slam your body with all of a sudden, if your TEE is a lot higher than this, you want to kind of gradually like add more. So you've reintroduced everything, but you're adding the number of servings to that initial base, if that makes sense. So um, let me give you an example. Here is a sample meal plan. This is 2100. I've actually had a lot of clients fall right in this range. Um, and so this is what Optivia's will look like. Okay, what you see on the right. And it is in this, it's a sample, so it is not something you have to follow every single day. But what I tell people is to, one, count up the food groups, okay? So you just go down where it says servings, and this one, they get three fuelings, so that's your mid-morning, mid-afternoon, evening snack. Um, three starches, so that's why I said, you know, it may take you a week or two to keep adding starches because you go from one to all of a sudden three. Um, four veggies, okay, which they've had, you've been having five, so you're kind of cutting one out. Um, three fruit, so you've had two servings, you're going to add one more. And then three dairy, which you've had one, now you're having three. And two protein, which is a normal size protein, the four to six ounces. Um, and so then with your coach, plan out your day, okay? What, do you, what does your day normally look like? Um, and so here is my personal day. I should have done mine, I, I guess, as an example. Whoops. <laughs> but mine is 1800 And so um, within mine, so I don't get the three starches. Let me see what's different about theirs. Um, I still do three fuelings. I get two starches, um, four veggies, three fruit, three dairy, two protein. I think I get three veggies instead of two. So uh, that's the main difference right there. But here's a day in the life of maintenance. And so I am not a morning person. And I tell people, use the feelings to fill in the gaps where you would either skip a meal or you would not have something available, okay? Um, so breakfast is not my forte. So I will do that hot chocolate in my coffee with my little frother every single dang day because it is so good. And it's something I can do real quick. I'm making coffee anyway. I cannot like even fathom creating a breakfast, like an omelet. Like that sounds just like too much in the mornings. And so um, coffee, hot chocolate, and I'll have a serving of fruit. In the my second meal, so mid-morning, which I'm about to have, I should have had already, but getting ready for this, but um, I'll do a bar. I might do the crunchers. I might do the cinnamon sticks um, with a piece of fruit, okay? So that's my, I've had two fruits and I've had two fuelings. Um, my third meal is going to be an open, open face. I'm a sandwich girl. I love sandwiches. So I'll do an open face sandwich. And the reason I do open face is because I don't want to use all my starches. So <laughs> I'll do the bottom of the bread. I'm okay with not having the top. It's not a big deal to me. And so I may do some cheese, which counts as a little bit of protein. I also love tuna. Don't judge me because I know some people think it smells and it's weird. I love it. But you could also do turkey or you could do um, rotisserie chicken on your sandwich. Um, I've also done like turkey meatballs and made like a meatball sub with the Reyes marinara. And then I love like the crunchy veg like veggies. So I'll do celery and hummus. Hummus counts as a protein. Um, and so celery and hummus, I'll put some avocado on there. You're just kind of making a healthy, good lunch. I also am a creature of habit. So I'm okay with eating the same couple things every couple days. <laughs> that is not something that bothers me, but um, I use my bread, I'll do a whole grain bread, and that's one of my starches. And so I would rather save the other starch for the evening, or I'd rather save it for another time versus having the top and bottom of the bread. So you just kind of have to decide, like, what are you okay with giving up and what are you okay with keeping? Um, what's a non-negotiable for you? Like, I have to have the top and bottom. That girl is crazy. That's fine but you've used your two starches, if that makes sense. Um, and then my fourth meal, because I didn't, I used my fueling at breakfast, is I'll do Greek yogurt with frozen berries, 
I may throw some granola on there if I want to use my starch there. I may throw some almonds on there just as a healthy fat. Um, and that's like an easy, it's got, I do the Greek yogurt because of the protein. So I'm still getting protein at that sitting. I'm doing my third fruit right there. Um, and then our fifth meal we love as a family, like my toddler will eat them, is the stuffed bell peppers or like the zucchini boats. Um, and so a lot of the lean and greens that you've been having continue, if you enjoy them, keep incorporating those into your family, into your dinners, and then add a starch. You may have already done that with your family. That was one thing when I was on program. I did not cook two meals. <laughs> I did not have time for that. And so my family would eat the protein and the veggie that I was making, and I would just make them an additional starch. And so now you can just partake in that. Um, and so try to keep it a whole grain. One thing we like to do is mix the veggies with the starch. And so I may make brown rice and cauliflower rice and blend it all together. So it's the starch, but you're also getting vegetables with it or I'll make zucchini noodles with regular whole wheat pasta and I'll mix it up so that we're getting some starch, but you're also getting vegetables with it. And it's the sub, like the quantity is bigger um, without having so many carbs. Um, what's another one? Those are the two main ones that we do. But mix in, you know, your veggies with your starch so that it's not, just starch, 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 starch. And so really you just wanna keep track of your day. That's the biggest thing. And the main thing I tell people to keep track of is those starches, um, because let's get real, most people are not overeating dairy. Like that's not really something to have to worry about. Most people are not overeating on their fruit. You might be overeating the fruit serving, so you might go over, um, but you really want to watch the starches because between donuts and bagels and bread and pasta and <laughs> rolls and all of those things, we can get 10 starches in in a day before you even know it. And so that's where you just being mindful um, of how many you've had and just start with that. Okay, let me count my starches. I had a piece of bread at lunch and now I'm gonna have some quinoa on the side. There's two starches, I'm good to go. And really all this time, keep be okay with the swaps that you've already been making. So um, let me finish this real quick. My sixth meal is the Optavia brownie. I'm obsessed. I will eat that every single day. <laughs> and I actually make mine into a milkshake with almond milk and ice. And so I'll just blend it up and that's my dessert for the day. Or have your brownie with a little bit of like whip on top. Um, or enjoy that chocolate chip cookie. Some people make that into a milkshake. Um, or just cookie dough or however, but that's my third fueling and I'm not skipping any meals. And so a couple tips for healthy lifestyle. So one, I'm going to point you to that life book because it is like you open it up and I literally think like gold coins start coming out of it. It is so good. Okay. So read element 15 that's the maintenance one. 14 is the transition, which kind of walks you through like each week. But then element 15, y'all, I'm going to say it and say it and say it again. It is so, so good. Um, and so do not skip that. Okay. That's the first tip. Second tip is connected to element 15 in the habits of health book is part 2.5 and 2.6 that talks about a healthy lifestyle and what that looks like. He gives you shopping lists. He gives you some recipes um, for incorporating just whole foods into your day. And it's really, really good. There's some good, good tools in there. And then um, tip number three is stay within your limits. They've handed you this beautiful food pyramid of what to keep track of. Just stay there and you're not going to gain anything. Like I promise I've been doing this for over a year and I'm like, oh yeah. If I just keep track of what I'm eating, I'm fine, you know? So if you like to food log, just like you did on the five and one, keep doing that. It's not out of the strictness of the day. It's just making sure that you're not going over. Um, be okay with lean and greens. I love lean and greens. You still need protein. You still need vegetables. Whether you're losing weight or you're at your healthy weight, um, you still need those goodies, that good nutrition in your body. And so keep those lean and greens, just add some starch to it or, um, you know, split it during the day or however it is that you are, is going to be convenient for you, make that happen. 
watch the starches. That really is where we can get in trouble because those carbs um, add up real, real quick. And so watch the starches and make sure you're not going over. Whatever your number is, that's what I say. Like memorize that number of starches more than anything else because that's really where we can um, kind of get ourselves in a snag sometimes and try to make them healthy starches, okay? Those whole grains, make those swaps from white rice to brown rice or um, from regular pasta to whole wheat pasta. They're really easy and there's not a huge taste difference when it comes to that. Um, still eat six times a day. It's gonna keep your metabolism up so that you're not slowing down um, and still drink all your water. Oh, I use your fuelings to fill in the gap. Sorry, I skipped that one. So that's where I say it doesn't have to be the mid-morning snack, mid-afternoon snack and evening snack. If you need a fueling at breakfast like I do, have it at breakfast. If you're not going to cook breakfast, that's okay, you know, but make sure you're having the fuelings to fill in the gaps where you would either not eat anything or you would skip that meal or you would make an unhealthy choice that's not going to help you maintain or stay at your goal. Um, and then Dr. Anderson talks a lot about the nine inch plate. And so what it is, is really a lot of us will serve ourselves. He says, serve yourself ahead of time and then go sit down. Don't leave like serving platters at the table um, because whatever we eat, whatever's in front of us, the majority of people will eat, okay? And so that's where restaurants can be tricky because you wanna make sure you're not eating everything that they've given you because they've overserved you. Um, but your plate should be like cut into quarters and so a quarter of that should be protein, four to six ounces. A quarter of that should be veggies. A quarter of that should be your grain. And a quarter of that should be um, fruit or a veggie. You can substitute it for a veg for like double veggies. Um, that's never a bad thing, right? Um, and so visualize that nine inch plate whenever you are serving yourself or even when you're out to eat or you're serving your family, it's the same thing. The grain should not take up half the plate, which I feel like a lot of places it does. It's like you get rice or potatoes and meat and you might get a little bit of broccoli over there, but half of it really is the starches and the protein and you want to make sure that you're evenly distributing um, those food groups, how you, how it's going to help you best. And, um, what if I gain, what if I start to gain? This is what I question I get a lot. And so do not feel like, I know that the five in one is comfortable. Okay. I understand it's super easy. It's way easier than cooking. I'm going to be real honest about that, but fight the need or the want to jump back on five and one just because you gained two pounds, okay? Or just because you gained three pounds, okay? Fight that. Um, all you gotta do is rein it in. Like I will tell my clients, I'm like, you just gotta rein it in. Like bring it back down, sister, <laughs> or brother, like bring it back down and rein it in for a few days and your body will jump back to where it needs to be. And so one thing I always ask first, my first question always, anytime someone tells me they've gained a little bit is how's your water? Because if you're not drinking water, we all know nothing gets flushed out. And so up your water, 80 to 100 ounces a day, um, and make sure that you are drinking enough to flush what your body is retaining. Because a lot of times it's not necessarily that you've gained it back, it's that you're a little bloated or you're a little swollen or you've had more sodium than you need. And so I, still, I do still tell people to weigh in twice a week or once a week just to make sure that they know where they're at. But don't freak out if it's a little bit more. Your body's going to fluctuate. Women, especially with our cycles, we all know that it fluctuates. Um, your body's going to fluctuate because you're eating different foods. And if you go out to eat, you can't always control how they cook things. But um, drink some extra water and then skip the starch starches for a few days. You haven't had starches, some of us, for months before we jumped back into maintenance. Um, or into our healthy lifestyle. And so skip the starches. Be okay with a couple days of lean and greens, and that's going to help you stay successful, but also just kind of um, just clear your body of the things and the carbs that we don't necessarily need. Um, and then make sure you're eating six times a day. That's going to boost your metabolism back up. Don't skip those snacks just because you may not feel hungry. There's a lot of times that I don't feel hungry and I'm like, I know my body needs it. You know, what we want and what we need isn't always the same, but your body needs six fuelings and six meals a day. 
um, needs that nutrition every single day. And so keep your metabolism up. And so that's another question I have. And then use your fuelings to help you stay on track. And so um, really, it doesn't have to be jump back on five and one with fuelings. It's really use your fuelings in between, have them for breakfast or have them for an afternoon snack so that you're not skipping meals. But you're also not just grabbing a random snack that you don't need that may be filled with stuff that your body really doesn't need. And so um, I hope that that helps. I'm going to answer some of the questions that you guys might have here in a second. These are some links, and I will post this um, PowerPoint in the Taking Back My Life page, um, and I'll ask Andy to put it in the files. But some of the th three links that you'll need, one is how to calculate your TE, which really is on the Optavia website. You just go to three and three program and you can calculate it. Uh, the second link is the sample meal plans because they range from literally 1,200 all the way up to like 25, 28, 3,000. Um, so that sample meal plan, you just find the one that matches you. I tell people if you're like it, 18, 20, round down, you don't need to round up. <laughs> but if you're at like, you know, 1960 something, round up to 2000. Um, and then the healthy exchange list, and I should have stuck this in there, but really what that does is it shows you what an actual portion size of fruit should look like, what a portion size of dairy should look like, what a portion size of starch should look like. Because also as Americans, our eyes are bigger than our stomach. And so that's where a lot of times we're like, this is a normal portion, but it really isn't. And so that's where you wanna make sure that you are measuring maybe in the beginning until your mind and your um, eyes kind of line up a little bit better. Um, and so use that exchange list. I'll say on there, there's a protein um, section that is if you're substituting a fueling for, um, like if you're not gonna have a fueling, this is a protein that you could have instead along with another serving of something else. So if you don't do a fueling, let's say you only wanna do two fuelings a day, that third one needs to be a protein from the healthy exchange list and either a fruit, a dairy, or a starch. I would probably do the fruit or the dairy before the starch, but um, that's what the protein list is for. It is not because it'll say like two ounces of chicken. That's not what a lean is. That's a, an exchange for a fueling. I hope that kind of makes sense. And then um, it also has some examples of everyone gets a free choice every day. So that could be a glass of wine or eight ounces of beer or a dessert, not an Optavia dessert. And it'll give you some parameters for that too, because you also don't want to go over when it comes to those sweets. Um, and so, and those little extra little snacks that we can throw into our day. So, um, I really hope this was helpful and kind of alleviated some um, stress that maybe some of y'all had thinking about maintenance or even knowing what's going to happen next. Um, so, okay, a couple questions. Should a guy transition when waist is at 37 or is it okay to wait until 34? Yeah, it just says less than 37. So if your waist is less than 37, this is for Mike, um, then you're in a healthy range, but still find a place that you feel comfortable at. Once you get to maintenance, can you have bacon? Yes, you can. <laughs> I do love bacon, even though I don't eat breakfast. I will eat breakfast at other times of the day. It's just not in the morning. Um, you can have bacon. Turkey bacon is still always kind of recommended because it's a little bit leaner, but it'll tell you in the healthy exchange what the bacon should look like, like how much to have, because you don't want to go in having 10 pieces of bacon. You know, you still want to limit it. Um, but yes, that is something really, you can have everything. Like guys, I've, I have pizza. Like that's a normal thing. Do I eat the whole pizza like I did before? No, <laughs> but I may have pizza and I'll have a salad on the side. Or if I have pizza one day, just because it's a family thing that we're doing or you go to a party, I get it. Life happens. Like sometimes you just can't avoid just skipping out on everything, you know. Um, but whenever I do that next day, I may be like, you know, I just don't really need starches today because I had a pizza yesterday, you know. But keep it to one or two slices. Try to have some vegetables as your, you know, veggie servings. Um, do I have it every day? No, 
I definitely don't need to. Um, but that's where everything in moderation, it's not about you can have this or you can't have this. We're having, you can have everything. You just want to make sure that you're keeping it in under control and you're not exposing yourself to some kind of like, oh, now I'm going to just go and eat everything, you know, and just kind of throw off your body completely. Keep it in parameters, but also know your limits. So know your limits. Your plan is giving you some limits, but also you need to know yours. And if that's something that you're going to, we cannot have Oreos in our house because if I eat one, it will turn into 10. And those are not good. And so that's something that I just know, like, I can't order those, you know? Um, or if I'm going to have dessert at a restaurant, if I'm the only one that wants it, it cannot get ordered because I will eat the whole thing. And that, that, I'm a sweets person. That's always been my problem. And so know your personal limits and be okay and be strong enough to say no when you know that it's something that you don't need. You have lived through five and one and you've said no to so many things already. You are strong. Like that's what I have to remind people. You are strong and capable. And so um, say no whenever you know it's something that's going to derail you or take you down a spiral that you don't need to go down. Um, but also, you know, that doesn't mean that you can't have it at all. Split dessert with several friends, you know, have a pizza and keep it to one or two slices and then try to find a salad to go with it. Um, and so keep it that, keep it reined in. That's really rein it in and you'll be good. Susan, do you have to continue doing all the fuelings or can you have 300 calorie healthy options? I um, really encourage the fuelings because some of those 100 calorie options are not the same nutrition. So you still want protein at every sitting, okay? So that's the thing with, um, with five in one is you're getting protein every single time you sit down and eat. And so that's when I have breakfast, I'll do my, um, my fueling with fruit and then my afternoon snack, because I did my breakfast, I do Greek yogurt because there's protein in there. That protein is what sustains you. Okay. So it's not, the carbs are not going to keep you full. The fruit is not going to keep you full. The starches are not going to keep you full for the two to three hours in between, because we're still eating six times a day. And so those fuelings are really what's going to keep you sustained for two to three hours because of the amount of protein that's in there. And so that's why I always encourage the fuelings. And then I tell my people, I'm like, if you're, you don't have to, okay, you have free choice to order what you want. Um, and so if they're not going to order, I'm like that stickler coach. that's so like, okay, well, what are you going to do? What are you going to have? because we are not gaining this weight back. So what are you substituting the fueling for? And so that's where that healthy exchange comes in. The protein list that's in a healthy exchange plus another serving of something. Okay, so use that. If you're not, I would, I would stay, I would just be brave and say, stay away from the 100 calorie options. Um, I know you said healthy options, so maybe you are referring to the healthy exchange list, but um, yeah. Get the fueling, that's the switch. If you're not doing a fueling, do protein from the healthy exchange list with another um, fruit or dairy or starch. When you're pregnant, which I currently am, here's this belly, I don't know if you can see it, but <laughs> when you're pregnant, so what I have done when I'm pregnant or as I have been pregnant, I continue the, my maintenance plan. Um, but there is, I calculated it for a higher activity level um, because my body has a lot of blood pumping through it and I get out of breath really easily. Um, and so normally I am pretty active like one to three days a week. We are walking, we might go jogging with my kiddo. Um, I am not one to exercise, so that's not, <laughs> that one's out of the question, but I calculated my TEE for three to five days a week, so a little bit extra um, than the one, because I realized then that just one to three, and so kind of up the activity level as a preg, whenever you're, have a pregnant client, or if you happen to get pregnant, um, for women, then it'll give you a little bit extra to kind of deal with. But 
I have had a really healthy pregnancy. All of my blood work has come out, come back really, really well. And that was not the case with my first pregnancy. I was on several different supplements because my blood work was all out of whack. And so, um, and then check with your um, OB. You can ask for the vitamins list and the fuelings, but you want to keep it to two to three fuelings a day whenever you're pregnant because you're also taking a prenatal and those fuelings are packed with vitamins. And so you don't want to have too many that you can over vitamin yourself basically, and you don't want to have too many. And so as a pregnant woman, you want to make sure that you're only getting two to three fuelings so that your vitamins are not too high. Um, and so you can send that vitamin list to your OB, your coach can get you that. Nutrition support releases that information to anyone who needs it. Um, and so I just forward emailed it to her. She said, yeah, this is great. You're fine doing two to three. She cleared me for three. So I do three each day. Um, some doctors may say, just have two, try to stick with just two because you're getting a lot of vitamins. It's whatever they kind of think. Obviously they're the professional. Um, and then, but do a little bit extra. So in pregnancy right now, I'm doing an extra starch than um, my normal day-to-day -day maintenance plan. And it's been great. So I'm feeling good. I've got good energy and, you know, gaining weight how I should be versus over gaining. So um, that's a good thing. And um, the fueling, the maintenance fuelings, they do have maintenance fuelings, okay? And those have a few more carbs than the regular ones. And so those are interchangeable. I do them both. Um, I am such a fan of some of the five in one feelings that's, those are the ones that I normally gravitate to, but you can do the maintenance ones too. And they are called optimal health feelings, but always connect with your coach when you're going into maintenance. And I would also recommend really, if you have to pause Optavia for some kind of life circumstance or things that are going on, still get your maintenance plan. Okay. Don't just like wander on your merry way and try to be healthy and then just try to keep it off by guessing. You don't have to guess at any of this, okay? You don't have to guess at the weight loss part. You don't have to guess at the getting healthy part. You don't have to guess at the maintenance part. And so if for some reason you're a client that has to pause because of finances or you have to pause because there's just a lot, life, life happens, I get it, okay? Um, but still let your coach and ask your coach to set you up for maintenance, even if that's just a three month window. You're gonna maintain what you've lost and then you can pick right back up and keep going with getting closer and closer to the goal that you originally set for yourself. Um, but get yourself set up on maintenance because really when it comes down to it, if I didn't know, I wish I had known all my life that I was only supposed to eat two starches a day. That would have helped me from the beginning not have to lose 35 pounds. So, um, so really those, that meal plan is just going to help you stay on track because you're going to know what to look for in your day. You're going to know what you can have and what you might need to say no to, and you're not going to die if you say no, right? So um, even if you have to pause your plan for a little bit because of life and things that happen, um, or even if Optavia is something that, you know, this is a great program, but I'm just maybe not ready for it, uh, but you've lost 15 pounds, still let your coach set you up on maintenance until you find something else that does work for you, okay? So I try to set everybody up on maintenance, whether they've hit their goal or not, because I want them to be successful and keep the success that they have had. Um, and so let your coach set you up on maintenance, even if you're not done, or even if you decide to do something different, because it's gonna keep you accountable and it's gonna help you understand what you need in your day. So I hope this was really helpful. We went way over, uh, but I am thankful for all of you guys. I'm cheering for each of you because this really is such an incredible journey. As you're getting your health back, you are um, getting healthy, you're contending for yourself. That is always something to celebrate. Congrats to each of you for everything you're doing for yourself. It's a brave choice and it's usually one um, that takes a big decision because we usually put ourselves last. And so you've taken your health back and you put yourself first, um, which is something to congratulate you for. So congrats.
keep it up. You can do this. I'm so pumped for you. Um, and we will end with a little Justin Timberlake because who doesn't need that in their life? Bye.